Hello everyone, welcome to Inside Star Citizen. I'm Jared Huckabee, and this is it. It's the end of the year. The much anticipated Alpha 318 is being hammered away on by developers and citizen testers alike. And it's that time where we look back and reflect on many of the more memorable events and additions to the Star Citizen experience in a special episode we like to call the Star Citizen Year in Review 2022. Cause, cause sometimes you just call a thing what it is. Let's get to it. We'll start things off with some of the big ticket feature items, and perhaps none were bigger than the server cap increase, which saw the persistent universe population increase from 50 to 100, paving the way for things like Siege of Orison, changing the dynamic for events like Jumptown, and as you can see here, the collective re-entry of 100 simultaneous spacecraft, and the loudest I've ever heard the VFX team giggle. And let me tell you, they're gigglers. Player Refueling also made its debut in 2022, enabling the peer-to-peer -peer profession that allows for a new way to help your fellow citizens and make a buck along the way, an important step ahead for the upcoming inclusion of the Pyro system, where gas stations will be few and far between in the wide open and desolate wastes, where anarchy reigns and everyone must fend for themselves. It's basically Los Angeles on Black Friday. In addition to refueling, the arrival of mining gadgets brought another refinement to that profession, providing new and improved means for making your fortunes out in the verse, and then coming back to liquidate that and almost everything else with the new selling mechanic, allowing players to finally clear out much of what filled their inventories for profit. Why can you make so much money in video games and not in real life? That's my mom asking, not me. There were also plenty of new places to visit and have adventures, including a variety of new derelict spacecraft both floating in space and crashed down on the surface of Stanton's planets and moons. These derelicts not only add to the visual texture and history of the Persistent Universe, they provide numerous opportunities for mission and loot gameplay as more and more continue to be added throughout this last year and the next. And the same can also be said for derelict outposts and rivers, which began with a single estuary on Microtech and continued to develop throughout the year into a watershed release included in the upcoming Alpha 318. But for me, the highlight of River Tech has been the ascendance of Will Hain to River Guy in the YouTube comments. More hospitals were added to the Persistent Universe in 22, as important an aspect as any for those of us who spend most of our time uh, waking up in medical beds rather than exploring the universe. <laughs> it's not that I'm bad, it's just that everyone else is better. Especially at racing in the first of several community-initiated in-universe racetracks such as the Snake Pit, which began with the XGR racing community exploding in popularity this year and an exciting initiative within development to canonize creations from the players into the Persistent Universe proper that will continue in the upcoming Alpha 318 and beyond. And speaking of the community, much of what made Star Citizen's 2022 special was created by the community itself, including recurring events like Fight or Flight, the largest 2v2 PvP dogfighting tournament in the verse, the Hurston Hurt Locker, a battle royal event on Magda that features lots of mayhem and death where almost anything goes and precious few survive, and the classic Daymar Rally, a canonized staple that kicks off each year with a 500 kilometer race with multiple divisions and loads of ground vehicle shenanigans. And in addition to competitive events, the role-playing scene in Star Citizen continued to evolve and take notice within both the community and development teams as players utilize tools within the game to report the news, create exciting narratives, and simply bring an increased sense of immersion to life in the Persistent Universe. And out of Universe, the Bar Citizen World Tour kicked off as CIG staff traveled to cities, states, provinces, and countries around the world to break bread and tell tales with players from all walks of life. It's been a terrific return to form and a chance for players and developers to connect that will continue throughout 2023 so be sure you keep an eye on the website and socials for details and let us know when events are happening in your area. Other notable events were the Battle of the Bricks, where the Star Citizen and EVE Online community teams came together for charity in a battle of building blocks, 
trivia, weird challenges, and whatever a wolffish is. It's terrible. Terrible is what wolffish is. And then this year, CitizenCon kicked off with the official Journey to 4.0 initiative, with presentations from developers on exciting new gameplay systems like resource management, master modes, and investigations. The return of Chris Roberts to peel the curtain back on Squadron 42 developments that will benefit the persistent universe in the future, and we debuted the only constant, the spacecraft where ISC, SCL, and more will emanate from for the foreseeable future. And it still has a few tricks up its sleeve we hope to show you in 2023 and beyond. But back in the verse, while the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo and Invictus continue to be highlights of the year, the biggest dynamic event in Star Citizen's history happened with the Siege of Orison, where the vicious Ninetales took control of the floating platforms surrounding Orison and waged a multi-stage battle against players in a first-of-its-kind mixture of Star Citizen's FPS gameplay systems and an impetus for numerous technological improvements to the entire game as a whole, including the server cap increase we talked about before. And this year's ship showdown was a chance for community members to showcase their creativity in pushing their favorite ships and vehicles into contention to be named best in show at this year's IAE. And you can see some of that creativity here, and here, and here. Definitely a highlight of each and every year. And speaking about ships and vehicles, let's do a rundown of all the new ones that made their way flyable and drivable in 2022, including the Hall A, Hover Quad, Mule, Centurion, STV, Scorpius, Corsair, Cutter, and C8R Pisces. And that brings us to now, and the impending release of Alpha 318, which will add a whole lot more to this 2022 of Star Citizen highlights, including hole stripping salvage gameplay. Yes, you and your trusty multi-tool, reclaimer, or brand new vulture have a new means to make your fortunes by finding and processing the remnants of space junk in the verse. This applies not only to destroyed player ships, but NPC hulks spawn throughout the Stanton system for you to discover and dismantle. The Cargo Refactor is here. The Cargo Refactor is here. Alpha 318 also brings with it the first iteration of the Cargo Refactor that will physicalize much of what we carry in our cargo holds and open up new avenues for cargo reclamation after disaster and potential piracy for the disaster causers of us out there. <sighs> I'm looking at Tom. There's also the new PTV racetrack in Orison that aims to provide a new recreational activity for those looking for the low stakes challenge of buggy competitions or for the players that go out there and create emergent opportunities that I have no doubt none of us are prepared for. Can't wait to see what you do here. And the revitalization of Korea and the addition of additional sandbox prison activities, two components of an overall overhaul to the crime stat system that will be more lenient on what sends you to prison while providing new opportunities to remove crime stat before going and after escaping. Six new persistent universe racetracks based on community creations that will bring players to several of the lesser traveled areas of the stand system and allow them to test their metal against others with new gateway and timer functionality being added alongside them. New Orison missions that run on the surrounding platforms when Siege of Orison is resting from all the mayhem. New sand cave archetypes in the Daymark crash site introduce the brand new Mercury and 600i derelicts being added to the persistent universe and two new exciting technological advancements this year with the implementation of the Gen 12 renderer and persistent entity streaming, which both convert the current persistent universe to new graphical and technological foundations that serve as the new basis for persistent universe's continued development, as well as set the stage for Star Citizen to realize its fullest potential in the years to come through server meshing, increased player and resource caps, and the addition of new star systems like Pyro, Nyx, and beyond. And going on right now is Luminalia, where players can log in each and every day to redeem a variety of in-game gifts, including holiday sweaters, undersuits, new paints for the 100 Eye, Avenger, and more. Remember, it is 12 days, folks. And a sextant that Ben Curtis has really wanted to get in there for a while. I mean, it's cool. So what did we learn this year? Well, I'd say a whole heck of a lot, but at the core of it all, 
To me, this year seemed to be about celebrating and renewing that connection between player and developer that's been at the heart of this project since it first launched in 2012. It's been said often and probably by folks much better than myself, but it bears repeating over and over and over again that none of this happens without your continued involvement, whether that's playing the game, uh, discussing on Spectrum, reporting on the Issue Council, uh, supporting through pledging, encouraging through Bar Citizens, creating and streaming through social media and contests and the like, or simply allowing us into your lives most weeks while we share the who we are and what we do with you through ISC and SCL and the like. It's kind of ridiculous that I get to stand here on a spaceship and represent the work of over 800 strong with you, from game directors to QA testers, from major features like salvage and cargo, down to little internal tools like asset validators. And I can hardly wait to see what 2023 has in store for us. This, this journey we're on can be exciting, rewarding, educational, consuming, and if we're being honest, a little frustrating at times. But there isn't another one remotely like it in the entire game industry with so many dedicated to bringing this universe of possibility to life. So, for one last time in 2022, for Inside Star Citizen, I'm Jared Huckabee. Happy holidays, be safe, and we'll see you all here next year.